have you heard about this great new thing that is certain to save our bees? Oh my gosh. And maybe it's something you heard on the internet, right? Maybe you read about it. And maybe it's something about nutrition. Different kind of nutritious stuff you can add together and feed to your bees, make them healthy. And if they eat that, they'll never have another mite. Maybe it's some kind of essential oils or some kind of organic material that you're giving bees. Maybe it's all this hopeful ideas that we keep hearing about. All these new things we keep falling for or hoping for that we see on the internet about what's going to save our bees. Are you just tired of reading about it? I mean, every day, every week, somebody new is saying something new that is going to finally save our bees. It might be a new type of hive, a new type of trap for small hive beetle, a new type of this or that. And it gets overwhelming. I mean, literally every day I get asked 10 to 20 questions from people like yourself commenting on my YouTube videos or other people that are asking me, have I heard about something new that just they just read about? And it's something I've been studying for maybe 10 years. Here's an example. A lot of people are starting to ask me about VSHBs, uh, VSH queens, varroa sensitive hygienic queens. Now look at this. All the way back, this dates to 2010, 13, well, 12 or almost 13 years ago, I was meeting, I was in a meeting with Dr. Jeff Harris. He was one of the leading scientists, leading researchers, along with Dr. Harbo, doing the work at what was called then suppressive mite reproduction. Again, look at this. This is from my blog that I wrote about 12 years ago and how we're using different things. And this is from one of my hives doing a sample test on the expression of this genetic trait. And could it be that the bees could clean out these uh, situations where something has gone wrong below the cap cells? Now, I want to address this. We've been talking a lot about mite control. I've really been encouraging you guys to consider integrated pest management. Yesterday's video, I hope you'll watch that. I may leave a link at the end of this one in case you missed it. But I gave a whole big drawing about integrated pest management. And one of the things that I'm worried about with our attempting to control mites is that we may put all of our eggs in one basket. I've never been a fan of that. I read about it sometimes on my comments. I hear other beekeepers talking about it. They'll say, the only thing I have to do to control mites is this. That worries me because mites might be able to have developing resistance toward whatever you're using. Uh, your environment may change. I'm not sure if we should put all of our eggs in one basket about controlling mites. Now, I have mentioned many times in my videos my feelings about whether we have a queen that can get rid of all the mites in our hives, and we don't have that. I really have never, I don't think anybody's making that claim. I think they make claims that they might have queens that are more resistant to uh, fighting off mites, but no one's really able to say, I've got a queen that you can buy, and once you buy it, you'll never have to deal with mites again. I think one of the things that we need to realize is that we don't have to wait until we get a queen that's 100% able to all her progeny gets rid of all the all of the mites in the hive if you buy a vsh queen that comes from a very reputable person this is sometimes where the question mark comes in but if you were to find one from a very reputable person who backs up their claim and they show data of how their particular breeding program is showing more resistance toward mites and if you bought one it may not be but 50 percent showing 50% resistance to mite. Might be reducing your mites by 50%, but isn't that huge? I mean, what if it's only 40%? What if it's only 20%? That's still a very good thing to pursue. And that's why I've always said in my videos uh, and, and all my blogs that I've been writing about for well over a decade, if we can graph from queens, really use bees that are showing this resistance, that they're able to exist in a presence of these mites, but don't crash from mites, those are better traits that we should graph from. Now, some of these breeding programs, I think, are stellar. I really do. If you look at Europe, some of the work that's being done overseas in Europe is just years, decades ahead of the U.S., but 
we're not going to be able to pull those bees over here. Some of the work that they're doing on their queen breeding programs is astonishing at resisting mites. One of the most fascinating works that I really respect is that done by Dr. Harbo and John Harbo and Dr. Uh, Jeff Harris. Uh, you know, Dr. Harbo was first work with uh, SMR, suppressive mite resistance. Now, the genetics of that changed a little bit, or that you're going to see this kind of keep changing <laughs> over the years, but these things continue to change, and so do the names. So instead of SMR bees, they changed to varroa sensitive hygienic bees. And it's just because there's more discoveries or more understanding being done. To be honest with you, even if you talk to lead scientists today, they have to admit that. They are even learning more and more about how bees are identifying these mites below the cap cells and then what causes the bees to open up the cap and then remove the pupae that is infected with these reproductive mites in, in the hive. So a lot of work is being multiplied out. It's being discovered more every day. I mean, every month, every year. So we're making progress. So right now, I think what we really need to understand is that there is a lot of legitimacy if you find a VSH line by respectable people who are doing the research, they have the data, they have the control colonies they can prove to you, not just make a claim in a magazine or something that they have mite resistant bees, but they can really show you the evidence. I, I really think it's a wise thing to pursue a VSH queen and see how well it works for you. I think that that would not be a bad idea at all. I've done that all through the years and have had a lot of different varying results. Please don't put all your eggs in one basket because one day we may find out that this particular method that we're using to control mites isn't working. But let me just say this. One of the most important things that we understand that I really get pumped about, I'm excited about this. I really am is IPM, Integrated Pest Management. It's in agriculture. It's not something that just relates to bees. We have got to get to a place and develop host resistance. If our bees can't show any resistance to the varroa destructor mite, then we're always going to be pouring chemicals on them. There's no other hope. There's no other way. I said in a video a few days ago, maybe two or three videos ago, that's the whole reason we started using chemicals when mites first came into our country in 1987. We had no choice rather than we were just going to lose all of the wild hives and all the commercial hives if we didn't find some way to throw something at them. And it was chemicals that we later found is not good for bees. But it was a way to save the day. Not good, but, you know, survival, right? Sur what you do when you're in survival mode it's usually never all that pretty, is it? You're, you're just trying to survive. And that's what happened. That's the situation we were in in the late 80s and the early 90s. But now we've made more progress. We found integrated pest management, which I showed you yesterday on my graph board, of many things we can use to help control uh, mites. But one of the things that we do need to keep hoping for and being somewhat optimistic about is VSH queens. So as I'm trying to encourage all of you, whether you're a new beginner or you've been keeping bees a long time, my hope is that I'm encouraging you to do your own research, to broaden your knowledge base, to come to an understanding like you just don't want to run out there. And like I started this video with, you don't want to just say, I read about this new thing on the internet. I can't wait. I'm going to try this blah, blah, blah in my hive. And it's going to work perfectly because I read about it on the internet. Now, there's a lot on the internet that's very respectable. Again, is the science behind it. A lot of you ask me question after question about all of the things that you've read about or heard about on the internet. And you'll see my comments say, yeah, we need more research done. So I just can't give you advice if you face your hive to the south and line it up with Jupiter and sprinkle this magic solution. It's all going to just pan out greatly because one person said so. That's just not what I do on my channel here. Now, let me clarify this. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means that it hasn't been tested and studied and we can read the results. So I'm never wanting to say just because somebody says something about essential oils, spearmint, lemongrass, 
mushroom spores, just because we hear all of these things being thrown at us and they sound like, well, I don't know yet, it doesn't, it does not mean they're not effective. It does not mean they're not the next big answer. I don't want to come across that way. I'm open to all of these things. But right now, I have to go and look at what's been proven, what has been shown, and what has been tested, and what is solid. More things are being identified with the genetics of honeybees and how we can carry this method further. And I think it's something worthy of our attention, worthy of our observation. But again, that should not be. If you buy a VSH queen this year, if you find one for 20 bucks and you buy it, that should not be your only egg in the basket. Please. And please don't buy a VSH queen and never test for mites again. You can't rely on that. Because some of these things, and, and these breeders will tell you, if you buy one of their queens, it works great in their environment, in their state, in their local apiary. But if you buy it and put it in your environment, totally different, in your apiary, totally different, the results may be totally different. And that's why you need to do the testing to see if you're getting the results that you think you're getting. So we have to have a lot of tools in our toolbox with integrated pest management. Sure, it includes things that aren't that invasive or harsh chemicals, but integrated pest management does include chemicals when we have to use them. Now, a lot of you liked my study yesterday that I did, and if you didn't get a chance to see it, you gotta watch this last video. I go behind the board, I write backwards for you, and I explain some of the integrated pest management techniques that have worked for me for a long time. Take a look at this video. I'll meet you over there.